You have one minute. Oh, shit. <laughs> the man knows me well. <sighs> you ready? Single subjects, single subject designs has nothing to do with the number of subjects in your experiment. It has to do with how you analyze your data. <gasps> we do not aggregate data. We do not average them. We do not put one subject with another subject. We look at that subject for the behavior of their own sake, for the behavior of their own sake. We analyze one subject at a time, folks. You plot their behavior. You evaluate that subject's data. You do not lump it together in an average and make everything disappear, right? Um, we want to analyze... We want to see that granular level change. We can actually get even more granular, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We want to just look at how that organism, that person, that rat, that cat, that dog, that flea changed over the course of your experimental session, right? So when we talk about single subject research, I've done single subject research with 40 people. Not a joke. I'm actually currently doing some single subject research with 65 people. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. It makes perfect sense because you're analyzing a subject by themselves. You are not going to lose a freaking average because averages do not represent individuals. We use single subject design to represent individuals, which makes it more general.